What's up guys? Lumberjack here again. We are back in sunny cold Ontario. The weather is back to a seasonal normal, but I think it's like minus seven right now. And I'm not used to it, so I'm cold. So let's get right to it. Uh, what I want to do today is a comparison of the modern axe. What I have is a Fiskars, you can see behind me here I think, Fiskars 28 inch. It's brand new. And the rusty axe, which is, uh, well it's a rusty axe. It's a five pound head-ish on about a, maybe a 30 inch handle so I will get a little more leverage with that and um, the Fiskars handle looks different they've done something and changed their handles I tried to find one that matches the game <coughs> the game but um, I couldn't so we got the black handled Fiskars 28 inch here right there and rusty axe so I've got uh, a couple trees here lined up they are poplars they are live but the thing about poplar is it's basically junk. So uh, we're, we're going to clear these. I'm on private property. We want to encourage uh, sugar maple and other um, shade tolerant species to regenerate here and get rid of all these ugly poplar. They're full of uh, false tender fungus, mushrooms, and uh, they're, they're just garbage. They break and they're here so that the, uh, the understory can regenerate and they, they grow quickly and they die quickly. So we're going to kill them really fast, I hope. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to set up the camera really quick. These are probably around 8 inch in diameter. I've got two of them here. And I'm, I've got a 5 minute limit on my video recording on this camera. So I'm just going to go for 5 minutes. If I don't get it down in 5, we'll just uh, measure the difference between the two axes. And we'll find out if the Fiskars is actually any better, if there's any technological difference to the shape of their axe head. Um, I think there's a reason that Scandinavians and American Canadian culture have been using that traditional shaped uh, face of the axe for thousands of years because it works. So we'll see if the rusty axe can beat the modern axe or if the Fiskars is going to win out and uh, get these buggers down faster. So let's get you, uh, you set up and we'll get to it. I'm definitely not the best uh, axeman in the world. Um, I am an arborist. I do spend a lot of time outside and camp and all that kind of general stuff. But uh, yeah, we, I was on a timber sports team in uh, in college, and I remember we we drank more than we practiced generally. And there was this tiny little girl at a competition one day, and she walked up to one of the, the vertical chop stations and probably five swats. I mean, we we all used high end axes; they were really sharp. Five swats, she had this thing down, and the biggest guys in our class couldn't come close to doing what she did so that being said my technique is not perfect it's far from perfect but uh, it's, a, it's a good example of just a regular guy chopping down a regular tree so I've always kind of hated these things because the main thing for me is uh, you can't really easily replace that handle if it breaks on you you're out somewhere and you're kind of relying on this you're hooped I mean you probably could come up with something but it is a lot easier to make a wooden handle that fits inside the eye of this, all you'd have to do is carve out this shape and you could put it on basically a stick and you essentially have your tool back again in working condition. So I've always been a fan of the traditional wood handled axes, um, even regardless of the quality of the head. Now you can get some really nice Grand Force Brooks, um, and Wetterlings, Scandinavian axes that are high quality steel. You could, you could shave with these things. You could skin deer, you can uh, make feather sticks. They're very high quality. <clears throat> and I would definitely go for even one of those over a Fiskars normally. Now the Fiskars, they... So, I have, uh, I've just hand filed a fresh edge on this. It's, it's relatively sharp, it's not a stoned edge, that's for sure. But uh, it'll, it'll do the trick. And as I said, the Fiskars, it's a 28 inch. It's uh, the longest chopping head I could find. And it's got the factory sharpening job on it. Which isn't bad, it feels fairly sharp, so these are in reasonable, uh, reasonably good condition to compete with each other, I think. And you can see the, the shape difference of the head um, says it chops three times deeper, so I don't know if that's true or not. We'll find out. And then the traditional shaped head, now that's not, obviously not perfect. I didn't get a factory type edge on that with the hand file, but uh, definitely you can see the difference in the, the two styles. This is more of an American, I think felling axe type, type head. 
So, let's get to work. Alright guys, start with the rusty axe in an 8 inch poplar. Obviously I just lost a little time there, so... Definitely gonna have to take a break after this. Oh, it's not a race. It's not a race. My God. Like I said, I am an arborist, but I've also been off work for a month. It's two and through pretty good though. Holy ah. Okay. Ah. Definitely passed halfway. And I am gassed. We'll get through. Holy... Oh, well, maybe I should have done a warm-up. This is a little bit embarrassing. I think this thing going to go soon, though. Oh my god. Should have brought a saw. Oh. It's definitely at a point now where even with a small hand saw, I could finish this pretty quickly. Brun, get back, bud. Go. Ah go lay down. I'm gonna try and come across the back here. We'll finish this off. Put her in the dirt. comes. I can hear it. Timber! Let's get this little guy out of the way. Oh god. That was fun. So that's essentially down. A little hung up. Ah. Okay, so that was about uh, four minutes with some rest time, obviously, but uh, not undoable just with your simple old rusty homeowner axe with a hand file sharpening job. It uh, really actually went through that pretty well. So I'm going to take a quick breather here, let the, the blood come back into my fingers. They're bloody numb. And uh, we'll get the second one down, get the Fiskers out here. Thanks, guys. Hang in there. So. I got that thing completely off the stump, but uh, it's still hung up there pretty good. It's amazing what one little twig will hold on these things. I could get it down easily with uh, a chainsaw here, but I don't have one with me, so I'll have to come back and get that. 
I do wish I had my helmet because Widowmaker's falling out of uh, trees while you're chopping them or cutting them is basically the number one cause of death in forestry, so this is pretty stupid, but we're going to go ahead and carry on. So my next tree is just up here, another 8 inch poplar, and we'll get rolling with the uh, modern axe here. It's definitely a lighter head and handle, hopefully I don't get quite as fatigued. Spit in my way. Let's get into her. Wow. There's trees in my way. It's cutting pretty well. I don't feel like I have to swing it as hard. through that. Okay. Start a back cut. Not gonna lie, I'm still fatigued from the first one. But I would say that this is actually a fair bit easier to swing. If I had done this first, I don't think the Rusty axe was done as well. I was definitely swinging it a lot harder. There she goes. Right down. The, oh, come on. Yeah, that, that was much easier. I was a skeptic. I was a doubter. A little skeptical of Fiskers, but it's a pretty good axe. Stay there, Bruin. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. There she goes. You just don't want to go down for me today. Yeah! There you go, guys. The Fiskers is, uh... <laughs> Why is this thing such a piece of cork? So there you go, guys. The Fiskers is actually a pretty effective product. I would say modern axe for the win on this one. Wouldn't, uh, probably wouldn't be the same with a good Grand Force. Brooks or a Wetterlings or something like that. Oh god. But for uh, 69 bucks or whatever that was, if you're not worried about the handle going on you and having to replace it in a shitty situation, it's a pretty good product. So in conclusion, guys, I think if I had to chop down trees all day and I had cannibals chasing me around, I would probably want the modern axe too. I don't think I'd bother with this rusty old piece of shit here. <clears throat> I mean, you'd be a monster if you swung that thing every day, the five pound head on it, but really for <clears throat> the amount of work you're getting done with it, go for the modern axe. This tree's hung up here. It's driving me nuts. Dog just playing right under it. Yeah, I couldn't, uh, the modern axe was, Fiskers, the Fiskers was uh, very easy to swing. I did not struggle with that nearly as much as I did with the, the rusty axe. I really had to drive that thing in there to uh, 
get the wood to fly out, whereas this thing just kind of fell into place. I think the smaller cutting face, um, I mean, it's lighter too. I want to try it with a good axe. Need to get uh, a Grand Force or a, a Wetterlings out here and do a comparison, but pretty good for 60 bucks at your 60 80 bucks at uh, your local hardware store. Really not a bad product. All right, guys, that's, uh, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments or uh, opinions, please feel free to share them in the comments. And as always, like, share, subscribe. If you want to try and help me out a little bit, I'm going to continue doing this. So thanks for your support, guys, and I will catch you in the next episode. Episode. Lumberjack333, out. Boom. Trees were harmed in the making of this video.